Welcome back to Rocket City. Our inaugural season was 3-9, and nine, and then we had a huge jump up to 10-3. and three. In this past season, we had an incredible stretch going 12-1 and one in the Sun Belt, including winning the Sun Belt Championship. Unfortunately, we did lose in the New Orleans Bowl against FAU, but it was a hard-fought game, and it was pretty fun. Today's NIL sponsor is Upside. With Upside, you can get cash back on groceries, gas, or dining out. It's extremely simple. It's an easy-to-use app. You just find a gas station, a grocery store, or a restaurant in your area that participates in it. I live in New York, so I don't have a car, so I don't need to get gas. However, I'm eating out all the time. My girlfriend is celiac, but she loves Italian food. Thankfully, there's a lot of places in New York that cater to things like that. Like we found this 100% gluten-free place that is also on Upside. So not only are we gonna be able to eat the gluten-free Italian food, which will be delicious, but we're gonna be getting cash back on it as well. What's nice about Upside is you have the option to get your cash in an e-gift card to somewhere else, or you can just get it straight to your PayPal or bank account. And it's like a no-brainer, like who would say no to cash back? Upside's free to download too. Like I would leave money on the table if I didn't use this app. And I'm not the only one who likes it too. Upside users around the country are earning more than a million dollars every single week. That is mind blowing. And they like it too. Upside has a 4.8 rating on the App Store. All you have to do to get started is download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play and make sure to use my promo code NOTTHE to get $5 off or more in cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Once again, use promo code NOTTHE when you download the free Upside app today. And you're gonna get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Thanks again to Upside for sponsoring this video. This year, we're looking to reload. And not only just reload, we're looking for a big change. We had some legendary players. Jeff Eaton finished second in the country in passing yards with 3,500. Freshman Brandon Ford was 27th in the country in rushing yards with nearly 1,400. Awusu was top five with 1,300. John Booker led the country in sacks. Tackles easy. We had a terrible defense, so they're on the field all the time. Oh, we got ourselves a new offensive coordinator. I didn't really like the last guy, so this is nice. Scott Satterfield. Not familiar with his real life guy, but hey, rock and roll, man. Dude is completely maxed out. Well, says he's level 29, so he must be a former head coach. This might be the best offense we've seen since Anthony Burks. Anthony Burks was just a young, first-time offensive coordinator. This guy has been in the business business for a while. It's all about a balance though. Some things go up, other things go down. We're going to be losing a couple of legends here. Guys like Lonnie Clayton, Jeff Eaton, Joe Van Hall, Jason Hudgens, Eric Adams, Joe Cox because of his funny name. Guys that have been around for a long time. Amari Jackson, who hasn't really been a star in a long time. O'Shea Jackson, but we all remember these names. Kaushik, which is one of my friends in real life. How about Jeff Eaton though? Two years on campus, 3,500 passing yards both years, 30 plus touchdowns in both. He did regress a little bit in year two, but that's all right. That's kind of realistic. He had so much more potential. I don't think any NFL teams are going to take him, but he's a tremendous college player. And I'm really curious to see what he does in the future. Maybe the USFL will give him a call. Such a fun dual threat too. He wasn't to the level some guys have had on my team, but he had that quick first step that was very dangerous and got him out of a lot of trouble. But as you can see, it definitely slowed down in year two. His first year was, ooh, that was fun. But he ends at 81 overall. Definitely exceeded his overall on the field. Lonnie Clayton. This guy was another fun player. I probably should have used him more. He was so good. And we definitely used him that first season. Over a thousand receiving yards, eight touchdowns. Then we went to a spread offense and just lost the tight end a little bit. I'm going to try to bring it back. I just like using tight ends, especially ones that were as talented as Lonnie Clayton. Joe Van was, he was just a hard-nosed fullback. The standard for our dynasties. We love having a good fullback like him. Can run, can catch, can block. Two pancake blocks. You love to see that. 95 acceleration. Very well balanced player. Appreciate your services, Joe Van. Jason Hudgens, one of the OGs, was one of the leaders of our defense early on, but then he kind of fell to the bench. Happens sometimes as we get better. Still a nice contributor. And as you can see, he's got that captain symbol over there. Even from the bench, he was a team leader. Eric Adams. I was hoping he would develop more than he did. He just became a backup role player. It is what it is. A lot of sacks given up. Yeah, but he wasn't that good. Mari Jackson, eight sacks total. It feels like he got more though. 64 overall. How much can you really ask from him? Same thing with O'Shea Jackson. Just six sacks. Kaushik though. Who remembers him when he was a fullback? He was a quarterback for a while. Not a very good one, but hey, it's still nice to have those memories. See how far we've come. Off-season recruiting time. So we actually have a lot of guys still left on the list. I think we need to prioritize them. At the top of my list is this center, Travis Page. We are in contention with Boston College, and on our roster, we do not have a good center. It's hard to find centers in this game. 
game. He looks solid. 77 overall, solid strength, good run blocker. We're going to want that next season. Ryan Vincent looks like a lock. So does Ryan Hawkins. Stephen Henry's a Juco transfer. He looks like he could be a good safety, so it might be worth a try that, especially with the 89 zone coverage. He's so early in the process, and UCLA and California are only like 100 points behind us, so that could get dangerous. I could just dump all 15K and just lock it up. I think that would be pretty nice for me. I think we'd still get Ryan Hawkins. I think we'd still get Ryan Vincent. Stephen Henry seemed like a long shot anyway. Like, if I did throw like 2,500 his way, would that be enough to get him? I doubt it, but the curiosity is going to kill me. But we didn't get Stephen Henry, but look how close he was to actually committing. Maybe I should have thrown more points on him, but let me look at Travis Page. So, oh yeah, we were well over for Travis Page. He was the main priority. We got Ryan Hawkins, Ryan Vincent as well. I think we can manage without Stephen Henry. We've got a lot of good guys that we already got committed, so I'll be happy with it. And after getting those big name guys, it gets us into the top 15 of recruiting classes at number 11. Really putting ourselves on the map here. And I think a couple of conferences are going to be calling our way now. Championship contender at an A2. That's pretty good. Position change is extremely fun, especially because we have a lot of athletes. Tyreek Parrish, he's going to be the quarterback. And I know that straight away. 88 speed, 90 throw power, 80 accuracy. He's going to be that dual threat. I mean, he looks like he can play receiver as well. Could play a little bit of defense, but we're going to have him at quarterback. Right as Jeff Eaton leaves, you know I love my mobile quarterbacks. He's going to be competing for the starting job. Dominic Easley, this guy looks like a receiver to me. 87 speed spec catch 75 catching 85 route running yeah i think he's going to receiver 90 carrying too so he probably should not have a lot of drops clear cut decision for me now nick dorsey's an interesting one he could definitely play corner but he could also play free safety his hit power is only 42 though but he has great pursuit at 88 so that would be awesome tackling is okay 63 but he's blazing fast so he's gonna be all over the field free safety he's a 78 and corner he's a 78 as well i'm gonna throw him at safety now that we got those athletes sorted let's go through every position position one by one to see what it looks like and this is before we have the training results i got a five-star athlete and tyree parish and then of course we got wayne fontenot we all know him from last year he had some good moments ryan vince at the number two qb in the class which is funny enough because he's probably going to be lower on the depth chart with that 85 throw power 75 accuracy he will not be competing for the starting job right away the running back room is going to stay the same we got brandon ford cam miller and terrell hughes got a new fullback in pat jones just in time he looks like a great blocker 88 impact. Love to see that. Hope you continue the trend of good fullbacks here. Receiving room is getting a new guy in Dominique Easley. Four-star athlete. Hopefully a lot of our current guys get a lot of development in these training results. Two new tight ends this year, Aaron Gibson and Nick Marshall. Nick Marshall looks like really fun to me because he has 91 speed, 72 catching, which is about that range where I think it's good enough for a receiving tight end. He cannot block well at all, but not the biggest deal for me because we can swap guys out. Aaron Gibson's probably going to be the starter most of the time, but I think Nick Nick Marshall might jump ahead of Jesse Gaines just based on that speed alone. Left tackle staying the same. Mark Hunt will be the starter, it looks like. Anthony Robinson also staying the same. Travis Page is that new center we just got. He's a huge upgrade because Luther Nicholson was only 68. Mike Matthews is a new right guard we got here. Looks quick. He looks strong. He looks balanced. I like it. Brandon DeLuca, a new right tackle, trying to compete for this starting job. Daryl Owen. Darrell Owen is still good. 99 acceleration, but that's becoming not as important if he doesn't upgrade because Brandon DeLuca has that 97 acceleration. I am curious about moving Dorello into tight end for some plays. That could still be fun. Left ends are staying the same. John Booker was a legend last year, so hard to move him from that spot. At the right end, we got Travis Nicholson still, but our new guy is Ryan Hawkins, number four defensive end in the country. He doesn't really jump off the page at you, but he's good at a lot of different things, and hopefully he'll become a role player. A couple new defensive tackles. RJ Harrison, just 66 overall. Don't even know why I'm telling you about him and the other guy is 60 overall linebackers we got alvin sap 74 overall not really anything tremendous here he does have that 91 acceleration 78 block shedding and some coverage skills tim missiles the guy you really want to pay attention to though he's going to be my user all year and it should not be a secret why 89 speed 99 acceleration 91 hit power 85 block shed like what more do you want he is a juco transfer as a sophomore so we still got him in his youth but he's already starting with tremendous abilities we have three new amazing 
decent corners coming in here. A lot of them with speed. Traverius Ward at the top of the list. 87 zone, 84 man, 80 press, 96 speed. I love that. Montrell Gordon, like all of these guys should be competing for their starting positions. And it's crazy because they're just stepping on campus and doing it like right away. Free safety is going to be interesting because we do have T. Denson, who was an All-American last year. He's probably going to be improving here in these training results, but it's hard to argue with the talent of Nick Dorsey. This is one where I could see T. Denson maybe starting off the season as the starter, but we switched to Nick Dorsey because he's just, I mean, look at him. He's on paper. He's already better. Steven Parker and Curtis Brooks, the new guy, they're probably going to be competing for it. Curtis Brooks is faster and the better tackler at the moment, so he's already winning that argument for me. Jacob Harrison's still our kicker and Dave Dunlap still our punter. Time to see those training results. Oh, Wusu over the 90s now for his senior season. I got to take a closer look at all of this. 99 catching. Oh, I, I think he's had that actually. But I mean, it's still crazy to see after all these years. 95 awareness, 92 break tackle, 91 trucking. I mean, he's a tank. Sounds like he'd be an incredible tight end at the next level or something. 93 spec catch, 92 catch in traffic, and he gets the 11 route running boost. That is awesome. That's what we've been waiting on. Wayne Fontenot gets a three overall boost, seven awareness. He's mainly a pocket passer, so I'm only looking at his throwing ability. That does not change at all. Throw power stays the same. Throw accuracy stays the same. We could definitely work with it from last year, but that's not making a strong case for him to beat out Tyreek Parrish. Oh, that's sick. Brandon Ford getting plus four. Cam Miller getting plus five. Terrell Hughes getting plus four. The running back room put in work this offseason. That's all you need to know. Getting some speed boosts over here. Plus three acceleration for Brandon Ford. He was dangerous last year, but he's getting even more dangerous. Seven break tackle. You love to see that. Three elusiveness. Terrell Hughes has 99 elusiveness down there, by the way. He's still fighting for his life. I mean, we just have a talented running back room. They're just all talented in different ways. 91 spin move for Cam Miller. You know we're going to abuse that. He's got the stiff arm too, not like we use that much. 73 catching for Brandon Ford. That's awesome. I dig it a lot, man. I really do. Chris Graham up to 99 speed as if he wasn't dangerous enough last year. 95 acceleration. He's going to set some crazy records this year, as long as he stays healthy, of course. 85 spin move. I see he's been learning from old Cam Miller. They must be good friends. 80 catching, 98 spec catch. I mean, he's been working with a Wusu too on that. That's clear. 90 route running. Yeah, he's going to the NFL this year, at least just based on his raw physical ability. He should. Ryan Brown. Okay, open field stuff. You, you were pretty good at that before. I want to see the catching though. 73. That's good. Going up at all is a good sign. 89 catching traffic. Going up 11. The highest on the team for that one. Whew, we got some talented receivers as well. Jesse Gaines with the plus three boost. Catching did not improve. You got catching traffic, but not really making a strong case to slot yourself up in the depth chart. Jermaine Smith, one of the only downgrades this year for us. Nice upgrades for Mark Hunt, though. Plus three. Looks like blocking across the board. We got plus one for pass block, three for run block. I like it. Left guard's working, too. Anthony Robertson, plus two. Luther Nicholson, plus three. He heard the alert that his job was being pursued, and he put in some work. Not enough to reclaim anything, but he'll add some nice depth. Dan Sims, plus four. I like it. Oh, yeah. He's well over the 80s now. You'll love to see that. Darrell Owen, plus two. He's already got this speed. Really should be, like, in incredibly impressive but the blocking stats i want to see a lot of these improving plus two pass plus seven impact that's where he really needed to focus so that's good Ooh, joe white has now improved over john booker in terms of overall at least that's crazy the all-american might be losing his job here that really wouldn't happen in real life but in a lot of ways he's not better than john booker but we'll give it to the the seniority that uh, that'll probably win you to the job travis nicholson impressive Doug Mayfield's been here for a long time. Plus two. Early on, one of my favorite recruits. Plus seven finesse moves. I, that is awesome. William Newton stayed the same for like, what, three years in a row? One of the most disappointing recruits in this entire series. I thought he was going to be a game changer, and he's kind of just been mid the whole time. Reggie Smith still working, though. 69 overall. Nice. Devin Carter stays the exact same, which is disappointing. The neck roll status did not give him the boost, and Veggie Smith is legitimately a better player than him on paper now. Ooh, Dixon Butts plus eight. He didn't really even play much last year, but the 98 awareness, 77 
91 catching is nice. 91 jumping. 81 tackle. Ooh, Dixon Butts might be making a play for other positions here. I mean, 93 man, 65 zone. The career resurgence for Dixon Butts. The press is high. That is awesome. T. Denson getting that boost. Is that enough to win him the job? 86 man. He might get seniority. We'll see. Steven Parker, plus five. That's awesome. 97 acceleration. 79 zone. So he did improve, but is it enough to keep his job? We'll see. Jacob Harrison got a lot of awareness boosts. Only one kick power, 93 accuracy. Not great. One kick power added to Dave Dunlap, eight accuracy. That is cool. Very successful training results. Probably the best we've had so far. Dixon Butts, though, definitely the most impressive of the bunch. Loving that career resurgence. This just in. The SEC, they're tired of Vanderbilt being all stinky and bad at football. So they're going to boot them out of here, relegating them to an independent team. And they're going to send out an invitation to Rocket City from the Sun Belt. Up and coming program. They beat Alabama last year, put them on the map, and they like the potential of this team. And it's in the regional area. Rearrange the divisions to make more sense in my brain. Does it make sense to you? I don't know. A lot of it's based on geography and stuff like that. And going to be a huge challenge for us because now every year we have to play Alabama, Auburn, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, Ole Miss, and Mississippi State. That one should be brutal. We get to choose a protected rivalry as well. I think Texas would be fun. Let's play against them. Holy crap, our schedule this year is just a reign of terror. Look at this. We start the year with Georgia, and then we travel to Penn State. Then we have Ole Miss at home. Then we go to the Swamp, and then we play Ole Anthony Burks. Then we split the season with Alabama, our rival. And then right after that, we got LSU, Texas. Oh my god, this schedule is brutal. But it should be fun and a good challenge for us to see how far we actually are. It would be absolutely ludicrous of me to say that we would come out of here with the same record that we had in the Sun Belt. Like, we're no longer in the Little Leagues, lads. We've jumped from the FCS. We've jumped from the Sun Belt. Like, if we win like eight games, I would say that's a huge success for us. That's pretty much all I got for this video. Next episode, we will start season four. I'll show you all the new recruits and everything. And of course, we'll be on our path in a new conference and a new journey. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. You all love in my book and as for me i am drew morris big old drewski not the expert and i'll see all you guys in my next video peace thank you to patreon supporters christian tag matt woodruff jack webb anthony you zach harper timbo slice jacob jordan wyatt jason huerta tyler cracker tyler mcglynn austin gazzetti casey knox demandre hunter martin rosalie jarecki and seth washburn